So today I'm going to talk about uh, the Ostrogradiscus method of integration. Now, uh, Ostrogradiscus is a method of uh, isolating the algebraic part of an indefinite integral of a rational function. Uh, as we may be aware or, uh, about partial fractions, uh, the integration of a rational function is usually obtained by uh, breaking down the rational function into partial fractions. That's the most commonly used method. But uh, not every function, not every rational function can be broken down into uh, partial fractions. Sometimes it may not be possible to obtain partial fractions, and this is where Ostrogradiscus method comes in. Now, uh, Ostrogradiscus method usually reduces the problem of integration of a real rational function to the integration of a rational function uh, or other integration of uh, simple fractions by first isolating the algebraic part of uh, the algebraic or other of uh, the rational function. So we shall think of uh, the integral of the form. We shall think of uh, an integral of this form, the integral of uh, a rational function of the form p of x divided by q of x, the integration with respect to x. And uh, we shall think of uh, the case where uh, the degree uh, of uh, the function p is less than that of q. So uh, we, we, we have that uh, p and q are both polynomials. But the degree of the polynomial p of x is less than the degree of the polynomial q of x. If this condition is not uh, satisfied, we can start by dividing p of x by q of x so that we obtain a polynomial of lower degree than q of x. So for this, uh, for this part, we shall consider only where the polynomial p of x is of lower degree than uh, the q of x. So the idea here will be to obtain some other polynomials that we shall call p1, p2, then q1, and q2. And uh, we use uh, the method of integration of this rational function that we call the Ostrogradiscus method. The method can be expressed in this form. The integral of p of x divided by q of x with respect to x is equal to p1 of x divided by q1 of x plus the integral of p2, a function of x, divided by q2, a function of x. And now we integrate this with uh, respect to x. We integrate this with respect to the variable x. Now this uh, method here is what we call the Ostrogradiscus method. So how do we find uh, the functions p, p1, p2, q1, and q2? These are all polynomials. Uh, and p1 should be a polynomial of lower degree than q1, while p2 should be a polynomial of lower degree than q2. Now, the polynomial q1 the polynomial q1 is obtained as the greatest common factor. Uh, the polynomial q1 function of x is obtained as the greatest common factor of uh, the function q and its derivative q prime of x, the first derivative. While the polynomial q2, the 
function of x is now obtained as q of x divided by q1 of x. So that uh, when we are given a function, uh, this, this integral, the integral of p of x divided by q of x, uh, we take interest with the denominator here q. So we need to differentiate q of x to get q prime. And then q1 will be the greatest common factor of uh, q of x and uh, q prime of x. Then q2 is uh, obtained by division, q of x divided by q1 of x. Now, p, the, the polynomials p1 and p2 are obtained in such a way that uh, p1 is at least one degree less than q1 and p2 is one degree less than q2. So that uh, if q1, for example, is a polynomial of degree 1, then p1 will be a constant. If q1 is a polynomial of degree 2, p1 will be a polynomial of degree 1, and so on. The same with p2 and q2. If q2 is a polynomial of degree 1, then p2 will be a constant, and uh, so on. So, so that p2 is one degree less than q2, and p1 is one degree less than q1. Now, I want to take an example. Uh, I want to take an example and apply this method. Example one. So I try to find the integral of uh, 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. I want to take a very simple example uh, which can be verified using another method. So uh, our function here q, q of x is equal to 1 plus 2, sorry, 1 plus x, 1 plus x raised to the power of 2. We can even expand this and write 1 plus 2x plus x squared. And the function p of x is equal to 2x. That's the numerator. So uh, of interest, this we shall not take much interest to this here. But of interest will be the polynomial q. So q here. This polynomial q, we can differentiate q to get q prime, which will be 2 plus 2x. Or we can write uh, 2 into 1 plus x. That is, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. So now, Q1, Q1 of x is the greatest common factor uh, between the polynomials Q and its derivative, Q prime of x. So that uh, this is the greatest common factor of uh, Q of x was 1 plus x raised to the power of 2. And then q prime is 2 into 1 plus x. So that uh, there is only one, co one common factor, which is 1 plus x. So that will be our q1, 1 plus x. This is uh, q1 of x. Uh, then we can find q2 of x as q of x divided by Q prime. So this will be 1 plus x squared divided by 1 plus x and this will give us 1 plus x. So you see that uh, both Q1 and Q2 
are polynomials of degree 1. And so in our formula, in our formula where we write the integral of p of x divided by q of x, uh, we get uh, p1 of x divided by q1 plus the integral of p2 divided by q2. So uh, we see that uh, we'll have our function q1 is 1 plus x and because we have said that the numerator p1 must be a polynomial of one degree less than q, 1 plus x is degree 1, so the numerator would be a constant. So we write a constant, let's call it a. Then we have the integral of, uh, again the denominator here is 1 plus x, which is our polynomial p2, which is degree 1 again. So the numerator would be a constant, I'll call it b. So we need to integrate that with respect to x. This is the integral of 2x divided by 1 plus x raised to the power of 2. We integrate uh, with respect to x. This is our function now. So the problem is to find uh, the values of a and b such that this one is satisfied. So how do we get uh, the values of a and b? Now the process here of uh, finding these values is not very, very, is not very different from what we do when we uh, try to resolve a rational function into partial fractions. If we had a rational function that we are trying to resolve to partial fractions, we would uh, first clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by 1 plus x squared, this quantity. But here we cannot do that because we have integral. We have the integral on the left hand side. The first term on the right hand side does not have an integral, but the second term has. So we need first, we need first to uh, eliminate uh, the integral. In order to find the values of a and b, we need to find a way of doing away with integral. So how can this be done? We know that uh, integration is a process that reverses differentiation. So if, if we have an integral of a function, say the integral of 2x, we should give us uh, uh, x squared. If we introduce a derivative here with respect to x, uh, it means that we differentiate with respect to x this quantity here, we should give us 2x. So basically, differentiation, we, we see that the quantity we get here is this function that we had here. So differentiation would simply cancel integration. Differentiation would simply cancel the process of uh, integration. So basically, this is what we are going to use. So we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So when we differentiate the right hand side, we will just remove the integral. We see that uh, when we write uh, the derivative with respect to x of the integral of 2x divided by 1 plus x squared, we should be the derivative with respect to x of a divided by 1 plus x plus the integral or rather the derivative with respect to x of the integral of b divided by 1 plus x dx. Now when we work out the derivative on the left hand side we shall get 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. And on the right hand side, the first term when we differentiate, this one now has no integral, so we need to differentiate. And the derivative of a divided by, remember a is a constant, 
the derivative of a divided by 1 plus x. Uh, let me just write it like that first. a divided by 1 plus x. But the next time when we differentiate, differentiation will just cancel the integration. So we'll be left with b divided by 1 plus x. Now, uh, this is the expression. So we need to work out the derivative of the first term on the right hand side. We see that uh, when we write the derivative with respect to x of a divided by 1 plus x, uh, a is a constant, so we'll be differentiating uh, the expression 1 plus x raised to power negative 1, which will give us minus a into 1 plus x raised to the power minus 2. Or oh, this is minus a divided by 1 plus x raised to the power 2. So we substitute back here in this term. We substitute back there. The other terms remain the same. So on the first term, the single term on the right will be 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. It should now be equal to minus a divided by 1 plus x raised to the power of 2. And then plus b divided by 1 plus x. So I can now multiply both sides by 1 plus x raised to the power of 2 to clear the fraction. So I will multiply both sides by the quantity 1 plus x squared. And that should give us 2x on the left hand side, which should be equal to minus a plus b into 1 plus x. So uh, with this one, now I can find the values of a and b. Uh, one, one way of doing that is uh, Simply equating the coefficient, the coefficients from here for x power 1, the coefficients of the left hand side is 2, and on the right hand side is b. So b is 2. Then we have the constant. Uh, the left hand side, we don't have the constant term, so the coefficient is 0, which will be equal to minus a plus b. So we, we see that b is 2 and a is equals to b so it's also equals to 2. So these are we substitute now these values back into our integral. There was our integral. So we are going to substitute the value of a is 2 and b is 2. And so the integral now reduces you can see now we will have the integral of 2x divided by 1 plus x raised to the power of 2 dx being equals to 2 divided by 1 plus x plus the integral of 2 divided by 1 plus x we integrate with respect to x. So now we have, we have broken down the integral into two parts. The integral of 2x divided by 1 plus x squared into two parts. We have 2 divided by 1 plus x, which is the algebraic part of the integral. And then we have the integral now of a simple rational function, 2 divided by 1 plus x. So that uh, in this case, we can now integrate the second term here to get to logarithm of 1 plus x and then uh, we have the constant of integration. So this is our solution. So the Ostrogradiscus method basically is used to uh, isolate. The, the idea here is to isolate the algebraic part of a rational function, a ration of the integration of a rational function. Once we isolate the algebraic part, we can then integrate 
uh, the other part uh, to get the solution. I'll do a second example. Example two. Uh, suppose you are told to find the integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2. And we want to integrate this with the respect to x. We apply the method again. So the method, we can write the formula. P of x divided by Q of x is equals to p1 function of x divided by p uh, sorry by q to q1 q1 function of x plus the integral of p2 function of x divided by q2 dx so our q1 uh, if you look at uh, this function, this integral here, our p, p is 1. Then q is 1 plus x squared, the whole of this square. So our interest here is q, q of x, which is equals to 1 plus x squared, raised to the power of 2. I'll expand this. Of course, we can differentiate this without expanding, but let me just expand. I'll get 1 plus 2x squared plus x raised to power 4. Then the derivative q prime becomes 4x uh, plus 4x cubed, which I can factor out 4x. And then I'll have, uh, I have, uh, sorry, I have 1 plus x squared. So, uh, from there, now, we can write uh, q1, which is uh, the greatest common factor of uh, q, and its derivative. So working out, working out this, we have the function q. The function q is, uh, is, was given by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2. q prime is 4x into 1 plus x squared. Uh, again, here there is only one common factor which we can determine as 1 plus x squared. So this is our q1. And then we can write uh, q2, uh, which is given by q of x divided by q1. So this is 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 divided by 1 plus x squared and this should give us uh, 1 plus x squared. So once we have identified our q and uh, q1, q1 and q2, they are both 1 plus x squared. So we can substitute in our formula the integral of p of x divided by q of x is equals to P1 of x divided by Q1 plus the integral of P2 of x divided by Q2 of x. Uh, so our function was 1 divided by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2. So we shall have the denominator here, q1, is 1 plus x squared. And so this one is a polynomial of degree 2. 
So uh, we have said that P1 should be a polynomial of degree of one degree less than, uh, than Q1. So this being degree two, then the numerator should be degree one. So we can write it of the form AX plus B. Then we have the integral. Again, the denominator here is one plus X squared, which is a degree two. So the numerator again would be a degree one polynomial. So we write CX plus D. Uh, I don't want to write uh, small letter D to avoid confusion with the derivative here. So I'll use, I'll use uh, something else. I'll use, I'll use a, a different symbol. Let, let, let me write f. Cx plus f. So now we proceed as before. To eliminate the integrals, the integrals we differentiate. So differentiating. both sides with respect to x, uh, this one will give us, will give us uh, 1 all for 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2, which is equals to the derivative with respect to x of ax plus b divided by 1 plus x squared uh, then plus c x plus f divided by 1 plus x squared this is what we get when we differentiate see that uh, we differentiate the first term the, the single term on the right hand side that derivative will simply cancel the integral because differentiation is a process of that would reverse the, dif the differentiation is a process that reverses integration and vice versa so the only term that we need to differentiate is the middle term this first term on the right hand side so to differentiate this we can use the method such as the product rule the derivative with respect to x of ax plus b divided by 1 plus x squared. I'll use the product rule. So I have uh, 1 plus x squared. The derivative with respect to x of ax plus b minus ax plus b the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x squared the whole of this divided by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 this is the quotient or rule so the derivative of ax plus b is a so the first term becomes a into 1 plus x squared then minus the derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x and the denominator is 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 then we can simplify this now this one can be simplified uh, or we can just leave it like this there is no harm even if we leave it like this uh, I will just leave it like that and substitute back and substitute back here so I'll have the single term on the right hand side which was 1 divided by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 
being equals to a into 1 plus x squared minus 2x into ax plus b divided by 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 then the other term was uh, cx plus f divided by 1 plus x squared so now to determine we need to determine the values of a b c and f so i'll first multiply both sides by uh, 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 so that will give me the value 1 on the right hand on the left hand side and on the right hand side i have a into 1 plus x squared minus 2x into ax plus b then plus cx plus f multiplying 1 plus x squared so that uh, now we can find uh, the values of a b c and f by equating the coefficients the highest power of x happens to be x power 3 that is cx multiplying x squared so I'll start by equating the coefficients of x power 3 and on the left hand side I have 0 which is equals to c so c is 0 then we have x power 2 on the left hand side I have 0 which is equals to we have the first term here a times x squared so the coefficient is a uh, minus 2a plus f so in this case we are saying minus a plus f is equals to 0 then I have x power 1 for x power 1 uh, for x power 1 what are the coefficients the left hand side we have 0 because we don't have x power 1 then if we open the bracket say we don't have x power 1 here but we have it here minus 2x multiplying b so the coefficient is minus b minus 2b sorry the other term we have c cx multiplying 1 so that is the coefficient is c so c c minus 2b is 0 but c is 0 so this implies that b is also 0 then last I have the constant for the constants the left hand side I have 1 we shall now equate to the other constants 1 is equals to I have a times 1 that is a then f times 1 that is the coefficient is f so a a plus f so I have the value c is 0 b is 0 then I have uh, minus a plus f is equals to 0 and a plus f is equals to 1 uh, from from here you see this equation minus a plus f is 0 and then this one a plus f is 0 so this I can now solve this to 2f two is 1 so f is equals to a half and a, a is also equals to a half so those are the values so I have the values a is a half b is 0 c is 0 and f is a half now these are the values now that we substitute back in our uh, expression here so a is a half b is 0 c is 0 f is a half so i put c is 0 b is 0 a is a half so in this case uh, the method reduces to the integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared 
raised to the power of 2 is equals to a half into x divided by 1 plus x squared plus 1 over 2 integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared with respect to x. So we get a half x divided by 1 plus x squared plus a half the integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared is given by tan inverse of x. Then I have the constant of integration, or the arbitrary constant of integration c. So, so that, uh, uh, again, you can see that uh, the method is used now to reduce, to isolate uh, the algebraic part, which is a half into x divided by 1 plus x squared. Then we, we are left with the problem of integrating a simple function here, a simple uh, rational function, which would give us the tan inverse of x. So this method, this method, as you can see, uh, reduces the problem of integration of a real rational function to the integration of, the ra of a simple rational function whose denominator has simple factors and the integral of such fraction is expressed through the transcendental function such as the logarithms or the arctagents. So this method is what we call the austro gradiskis method. Thank you for listening.